Today we start breaking down Mariah's memoir. Hey kids, Treacle here. Welcome back to my channel. So today we actually get to sit down and talk about the memoir, The Meaning of Mariah Carey. I've been looking forward to this. I've given everyone some time to have the book delivered and delve into it. And that's what we're gonna do here right now. To help me dissect this memoir, I'm welcoming back to my channel, friends of the channel, Nath Moore, Taz Conway and Dimitri, who have all featured previously in episodes of Hey Lamb. So welcome everyone, and thank you so much for joining me. Everyone's got their books ready, right? Let's see them. We do. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Nath, you and I have got the same ones, right? We have got mm -hmm. the, the UK brown hardback, yeah? Mm -hmm. But we've got different ones compared to the other two. So, Dimitri, show us yours, because yours is beautiful. So mine, I love it. It's white. It's like a stone color. <laughs> it is. And then here on the side, if you can see, it's like gold and it has the little- Say Andy Cohen on it. Yes, it says Andy Cohen yeah. books at the bottom. I don't know if you can see. And on your dust jacket though, do you have a different spine? No, I think that the spine is the same. Maybe, I think the only difference is Andy Cohen. Oh, okay. Cause I thought I saw a photo of one where it was stone, like hardback, but it was more like Taz's spine but apparently oh. not. Taz, you have the paperback in Ireland, which I think is gorgeous. Yeah, I like that one, that one's nice. Yeah. There's no um, picture of her at the back of this one, it's the nose. Yeah, so different, yeah, because this picture is really important. Yeah. It's really important yeah. to Tori, it's really important to Mariah, and you lose that. Um, and, and yeah, so you don't have the hair or anything, it's just, yeah, it's different. Mm. So I'm telling everybody about the hair. I'm like, so this is baby Mariah, <laughs> and it like goes into the, into the new Mariah. <laughs> so today we're going to delve into the first section, Wayward Child. But before we do um, break it down, I just want to get you guys' thoughts really about the book overall, like your experiences uh, with it, how long it took you to read it, how you consumed it, whether you listened first or read, read and listened, how long it took you, that kind of thing. Um, so Dimitri, how did you uh, get on with the book? So I am actually only, I just finished part two yesterday. Oh my God. Um, I'm taking, yeah, I'm taking my time. <laughs> I'm taking my time. Um, at first, like when I first got the book, every moment that I had, every free moment was like reading, reading, reading. And then, um, I don't know who said it. One of you guys said like, you're only going to have, you're only going to be able to read this book for the first time once. I think it was Nate. Yeah. And that like really sat with me. So uh, yeah, I waited, like now I wait until like, you know, I have showered, I'm in comfy clothes, I'm like laying yeah. in bed at night. And I just, it's really, I just really take it in. Wow. So I have just finished part two. However, obviously I'm loving it. Um, Wayward Child, I, that section, I cried like four or five times. <laughs> You are really savoring every drop. I feel like such a whore. I devoured it in two days. Like <laughs> and a half. I just tore into the book. Uh, I thought I was going to. Yeah, I, 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 I blocked time out of my diary. I made sure I was uninter uninterrupted. And I just, yeah, ripped into it. Um, Taj, you finished fairly recently. Is that right? But maybe about a week and a half ago, but I was pretty slow. I thought you guys all finished. I didn't know you were only on the second part, uh, Dimitri. So, yeah. Um, again, like that, I thought I was going slow to church and all in. Um, <laughs> but I just I just set time every night. But it was, I wanted it not rush through it as well, because I spoke again to a couple of lambs that read it in a day or two, and then they were forgetting parts and they weren't letting, I suppose. Yeah, I just wanted to, like, savor some of the moment and, like, read through it again, make sure I was reading it right and... You know, just I suppose going through that experience that she was telling us about. Yeah, I, I found I'd get to the end of some sections and I'd would, like close the book and just kind of go like, wow, you know, we just heard that part of her story from her. And I would reflect on it. But after like 10 minutes, I was just too hungry for the next bit. So I was <laughs> just, I'm really bad at waiting. I waited for the Rarities album. Um, I, you know, I didn't spoil that for myself, but the book, I couldn't, I couldn't wait. So um, Nath, what was your um, experience? Were you reading and listening at the same time? reading and listening from the from the get-go um but i i think according to the audiobook i have like an hour and four minutes left of the book and then i'm done so it's like a couple of chapters um 
but I, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to savor everything and just get through without crying as much as I have been. <laughs> there was one time I went downstairs and my my um my housemate was like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> just having a little moment the way i paced myself when i was reading the book for the first time was i actually found myself reading it out loud to no one just here by myself because i can be a fast reader and if i feel like it's really juicy i will just not skim read but like i i could find myself going too fast like i'm not going to take everything in slow down so to make myself pace i was reading for like about three hours of it, I was reading out loud to the room just to make myself slow down. Um, I read it in two days. I listened to the audio book. I've gone back through the first couple of sections in preparation for us getting together. And I think it's going to be the sort of thing where we just reread it and re-enjoy it, especially the audio version, because there's more musical moments than I was expecting. I don't know how many you, yeah. you guys were expecting, but like you don't get very long without her breaking into some kind of musical moment. Were you guys surprised by that? Yeah, I was thinking more of like a like at the beginning of every chapter, there'd be like, oh, so this chapter's called Close My Eyes. Here's a little bit of Close My Eyes. I wasn't thinking it was going to be like entwined in the whole thing. And I didn't realise we were, we were going to get some new vocals from songs we've never heard before, like the the one that she sang for her dad or something. Yeah, I was really surprised by... by really surprised by all the um, new vocal moments. Um, what do you guys think it, it adds to the book? I haven't listened yet. I haven't listened you yet. Haven't listened to you too. Okay, <laughs> no, you I'm waiting until bit too much. Uh, Taj, what, um, what did you I'm make? the same. I actually have okay. listened to it, yes, I have listened to it, but I have heard that it really adds to the book and apparently her humor comes across really well in it as well, more so than maybe reading the book, just to hear her, I guess, you know, telling a story um probably you know it makes it like i'm probably reading in the book like it's like this so serious dramatic thing and maybe it could be a bit more lighthearted when she's probably explaining something but i'm sitting there in in the trolls of despair for her but maybe it's not that deep at times yeah, that that is it so nate i didn't realize you and i were a little bit ahead with, with the audio experience because it really is an experience it does add a different thing and i did find exactly what Before. you just described taz um there are bits where i read it in like one kind of manner or i put a, you know a certain tone you know of her voice in my head and then when she reads it it's like oh okay no she is a bit light hearted with it or no she's really taking her time with this and it's actually a little heavier and a little deeper um so i'm happy with my you choice know. to read it and then listen because she listens to her speak it kind of confirms whether you really absorbed it and interpreted it in the way in which she intended. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, but you guys are in for a treat, no doubt. Just alone, just for the musical moments alone. Because there's so many songs that she touches on. We get so many lyrics and I'm really excited. Um, Do you think she was going to? Not as much as she did, no. Not as much. I'm very really shocked that we got, you know, like some bits of... I don't want to give it away, but there are some songs when I was like, oh! I wasn't expecting her to do that, but yeah, okay. And even though um, I read the book first and the lyrics are there, I didn't expect, you know, almost every time there's lyrics on the page that they're going to be sung. Um, so even though I saw, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. So even after reading it, you'll still be surprised just how many vocal little treats there are. Let's dive in. Um, the, treat. First, <laughs> the first note, I, um, cause I did get my highlights. I've got all my highlights and I've got all my stickies and things. This is my um, reference copy. And then I've got like a backup copy and a spare copy to give to a friend who's in desperate need. I've given away, I think I've bought like nine copies. Copy so and another spare copy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the reference one. Uh, one of the first things I highlighted was um, right at the beginning, um, when, uh, an intention, um, where she kind of puts this disclaimer up front. Um, I just want to read this bit. She said, Though you cannot dispute someone's lived experience, without a doubt, details in this book will differ from the accounts of my family, friends, and plenty of folks who think they know me. I've lived that conflict for far too long, and I'm weary of that too. I found that super interesting because I kind of wondered, you know, before Mariah even announced, her, you know, she was working on a memoir, I wondered for the longest time, will she ever sit down and tell her story? Or is it, in one sense, just more trouble than it's worth? Is she too 
sensitive to like how it might piss people off or change in you know impressions so i found it really interesting that right up front she kind of just said yeah i'm doing it and this is these are my experiences and they're not going to match other people's namely I'm, I'm taking that as her family's um but this is my truth and this is how i'm telling it and it probably it might not match you but that's 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 what it is what did you guys make of that i probably feel like that you know, like you obviously had professional relationships and personal relationships and I think, you know, maybe in the mid 90s, a lot of those relationships were strained for obvious reasons. And maybe they couldn't say a certain amount of stuff because they were probably still under a certain record company. Um, so I think a lot of relationships went by the wayside. And, you know, there was just, I suppose, they might have done nothing wrong, essentially. But Mariah at the time took it one way and obviously they took it another way. And they were obviously loyal to one side versus another. So I think a lot of good um, musical relationships definitely um, suffered in that because of that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, she's had all these years in the industry. I mean, we've just seen Allure get pretty pressed on social media. They weren't included. Um, they're not angry because there was something bad said about them. They're angry that they weren't even included. And I feel like there's, yeah, there's going to be those moments because there's too many people to make the final cut. I don't know if they were in any version of the book or not, but... Um, it could yeah. be as well. Sorry, Nate, say again. Like, she's been in the business for 30 years. She's worked with countless people like Allure and Jermaine Dupree and Brian McKnight and Whitney. And, like, no one... I don't think Brian McKnight's mentioned in it. So it's like, she can't mention everybody. So... Really, she quickly mentions him. Like, it's just, like, a quick little, like, name drop. And then she moves on. She doesn't... St- talking about him yeah there are some where it's just like working relationships and even some personal relationships where there's just like a, a reference um and you don't really get anything and if, it, if everyone wants to get their fair weighing um then it would just be a book of these are the people i've worked with these are the people i've been with and it would stray too far away from her story i think it does that at one point right. in the book but that would be a different video on a different section <laughs> um what i love so much about wayward child is it really is um, little Mariah's story. And when she first announced the book, I, I, I kind of thought I wanted all of the industry stuff and you know which albums did she have dramas over and which songs did she have to fight for? I want the stories behind the songs. And I was kind of almost hoping that not too much of the book would be spent on her childhood. I was so wrong because I was so, so happy we got everything we got in Wayward Child because that's a whole chunk of time that, you know, we don't really know what, what happened. So I actually found it wow. overall really, really satisfying um, to finally have this. What about you? It's my favorite section. It is, it's your favorite? Because we don't know, like, like we understand that she was, you know, um, by, I wanna say bisexual, uh, biracial and, um, you know that her, that her, bit, her right. mother was that bit. That bit <laughs> that's that's book darling. <laughs> Spoiler alert. So, so, that's that's Brat's book. So, yeah, which book have you been so reading? We, You're in the wrong book club, babe. Oh, I have the unauthorized version. <laughs> um, so, like we, every but every lamb knows that you know she her mum was her mum's white, her dad's black and Venezuelan, and and da 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 da. But we didn't know, like, the, it's the little tiny, like, so it's like the little stories that, that I like that we've never heard, like, yeah, we know that she sang, like, Regaletto and it was, you know, this massive moment that her mum was like, wow, she's got an ear for it. We've heard that countless times. It was the little stories, like, when she was with her, um, I think it was her grandmother that put cheese on her father's white clam sauce. And she's like, no! and like ran upstairs like that that is like one of the stories that stands out to me because we've never heard that before we've heard about her dad's signature dish but we've never heard like you know her grandmother tried to like sabotage it or the story with morgan pushing her mum over and 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 things and i i was so immersed in that story that i was actually like holding my breath and like that was probably the first time I'd cried in the book because I'm like that poor little Mariah was just this you know wayward child and you know he's witnessing you know her 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 mum being 
hurt by someone that she's supposed to trust. Yeah, I was really um, uh, like affected in a way by reading some of the stories that Mariah witnessed because she hasn't always given us specifics. We always know that by the age of 12, she was affected by things and she saw and heard things that no one should by that age, but she was brave and she really gave it to us in, in the book. And it wasn't just like one thing or two things. I, and I feel like there was probably more, you know, but she didn't want to like overdo it, but she gave us like the, 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 the biggest ones really. But um, was there anything, were there any stories in particular, Dimitri, that um, made you kind of really, you know, feel that like, wow, I can't believe Mariah experienced that or witnessed that. What were some of those moments for you in the book? One of the ones that really sticks out is the Ritz cracker one. Um, just the way that she describes like the box coming out of the cupboard. Um, I don't know she just describes it as it's like this treasure yeah. and it, it just, I don't know, you don't think of Mariah having one Ritz cracker. I mean, actually we, we know she takes like little nibbles of, you know, crisps, but. <laughs> the end of the morsel diet. So that's where that came from. Exactly. <laughs> but um, one of the things that I found while reading Wayward Child is I mean, I knew I was reading about Mariah, of course, but I kept forgetting that this story was about a superstar, Mariah Carey. It was just this little girl that you could not help but feel sorry for. And I, one of the things that she said, I think it was on the part where, um, with Morgan and her mom, that whole situation, where she said something about like, my tiny body was in the corner or like, curled in that, that I just started bawling because it was just like you pictured this little girl you know the innocence of this little girl just being traumatized and it was like oh. human exactly yeah yeah she's at that point she's not Mariah Carey she's she's this little vulnerable child and mm -hmm. I had to much the same as interest you said it Dimitri because I had to kind of remind myself like close the book and like this is who we're talking about this is what happened <laughs> exactly. with this person and just kind of remind because I think that Michaela and Mariah did um, such a great job at bringing little Mariah to life and they said that in like interviews and press before the book came out and it and I, it's not like I didn't believe it, but I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. But then you read it and like, oh my God, no, they really, really did because you are reading this little girl's story. And like I said, you have to keep coming back to the cover and remind yourself that that's who, you know, little girl turned, turned into. Um, Taz, what were your thoughts on some of the experiences that little baby Mariah had? No, like I've obviously lived for music and everyone takes their own from her music. So we all relate it to our own lives. And I guess, you know, like I didn't really have I suppose the struggles that she had experienced in her life in terms of her um, biracial and stuff like that. So well, I think for her to give us those stories, you know, and the way she told them, they really, you, you, it really put you there and um, put you, you know, you kind of got a sense, even though I tried to imagine it probably wasn't even have of what she actually went through. And um, I think it just gave us a new understanding of the stuff that she has at Jordan, you know, the resilience that she still has to this day. And I think like, obviously she's known as Mariah Diva, but like the true fans know that that's you know the act she is a real person she always makes time for all fans she just knows she's she's never she wasn't born with a silver spoon in her, spoon in her mouth so i think that makes her you know behind the you know the theatrics i guess that is Mariah Carey that there is a real person in there who has gone through and knows you know real life i guess yeah i really hope really, so that the wider public get to connect with the book and just you know appreciate some of the stuff that she went through because like you just said the the diva the the act it, it is like you know playing dressed up and playing up to her image and that's you know we want Mariah Carey to be Mariah Carey but we all know underneath all of that there's you know such beauty and a heart and that's where the music comes from um but I, I've got one two three three or four friends that are reading the book that are not lambs but they fully support my channel and they appreciate Mariah's music and I can enjoy the music with them um but that they're like oh I think I'm in right I'll get you a copy you half said you're interested here's a copy <laughs> and enjoy it um, and I'm really interested to speak to them when they finish the book because there's going to be I mean we had our minds blown by the stuff that Little Mariah went through. And we've paid attention to her interviews throughout the years in the press, in magazines, papers, TV, radio, everything. So we kind of knew some of the stuff, but we were still really gooped. So I am really interested to see what like my non-lamb 
friends take away from it, especially the childhood stuff, because this was, I know we don't count time, time is irrelevant, but this was a certain number of years ago and times were different. So Mariah's experience growing up as a little kid is it's a different world in many ways to the world that your little boy Taz is growing up in. You know, I mean, in some ways things haven't changed as much as we would like, but it is a different time. Um, and yeah, your son will not be growing up the same way that, that Mariah did. And I think it's gonna be really interesting for people to, yeah, just to kind of hear what, what Mariah went through. Yeah, I have definitely been, even like non-Mariah fans, my coworkers, I'm just like you, but, and I'm just like, you have to read this book. And I tell them little sections. And there's so like every single person that I tell certain stories, because I'll only tell the stories if I know they're not going to read the book. But whenever I do, they're so blown away. Like they can't believe that like Mariah went through all of this stuff. And then, yeah, I've, cu- I've got a couple of friends who are like, now I'm getting the book. <laughs> <laughs> but I-, I was trying to think like, how can she have a, like, how can the general public read this? Like, I don't know how they're going to, um they're gonna have to physically go out and spend money on it and it's like i don't see how any i know what you mean i like (laughs) over here and it's like no one's gonna go and be like all right then i'll go and buy a book for 20 pounds and you know read it like they're not gonna be like all right i'll give her the benefit of the doubt like yeah how is the general public going to really get their hands on the book. And I think that's why it's great that there was a good amount of promo done because I think Mariah has certainly written the book for the Lamely, but they've done a really good job with the marketing and getting it out there. Um, she was in some UK press and I was happy with that. So hopefully the word is, is going to spread. Um, and, you know, I will certainly be lending more copies, giving more copies. I'm, I'm really, it's almost like I want to do a separate book club with my non-lamb friends. <laughs> because <laughs> there's enough of them and they're all reading the book i'd love to get them together and just um i think they'd really i think they'd understand why i love mariah so so much they'd have a deeper appreciation if they get through the book and, and they they read everything is there anyone in in you guys lives that you particularly want to read the book is there anyone that you really want to like please take it and read it do you have anyone Sorry, one of my one of my mates at work was saying to me that there was a lot of hype you know there was a lot of articles in newspapers and stuff that his partner wanted to read the book I was mad to get it. I never, I didn't lend it because they better go buy it. <laughs> if they want it enough, <laughs> they, they guess they spend their own yeah, coins. Yeah. Dimitri, you were nodding. Who do you want to to make the effort to read the book? Definitely my mother. Um, I, yeah, she had mentioned to me. We had a phone call, and she was like, "Oh, I heard Mariah is coming out with a book," and she's like, "There's an audio version as well." And I told her yes, and she just said like, "I would really love to hear what she has to say," and. Um, me and my mother, like growing up, we have like a sort of bond when it comes to Mariah because she had Mariah records and that's, she introduced me to Mariah, but she only knows Mariah's songs. She doesn't know like what we know about Mariah and she doesn't obviously follow Mariah like that. But um, yeah, I would really like her to read the book and listen to what Mariah has to say. And then you guys can have a very interesting conversation about it if you guys need to, or I don't know, maybe just help your help your relationship go to a, a new level I guess it sounds like yeah I yeah definitely I feel like it'll be it'll be helpful uh Nath anyone in your life that you would like to make the effort to read the book um my mum and um, just because she kind of gets my obsession but you know obviously you know that she you know supported it and things and I just think it would be like a full circle kind of thing if she was to to read it when she speaks about her childhood and I just think my mum would would like it. Uh, One of the things that I really was pleasantly pleasantly surprised by um, was the detail she was willing to go into with her family. Um, I mean, where do we start? We've got the siblings, we've got the father, we've got the mother. Where do you guys want to start? (laughs) I I wrote a note about this. Yeah. This whole book has changed my opinion on Patricia, for one. He doesn't deserve to be on Merry Christmas to you. So Mariah has taken R. Kelly off of the elusive Chanteuse. He, She needs to take her off Merry Christmas to you. You want to revoke her album credit? You... 
Yes. <laughs> um, and Alfred Roy Carey is painted and in a different light as well. I, I always thought Alfred Roy was the was the bad one. And like he left the family and stuff. And Patricia was this like angel and stuff. But it seems to be the other way around. Like when she was um talking about her dad passing away, that's when I was sobbing and I'm like, wow, because I thought about my own dad. I was really surprised um by the stuff with Patricia. I, I almost thought that if there was like bad energy or bad blood she would almost adopt the whole like well if you can't say something nice don't say something at all and patricia would have like a large absence in the book and we would be like well why is she talking about her mom oh because maybe it's not all like really good um but no she was honest really really honest um and yeah, her honesty i i think it's brave um it's i think it really speaks to where their relationship must be right now um what really um kind of surprised me was you kind of feel that almost like jealousy and Mariah uses the word jealousy um from Patricia towards Mariah um did you guys really you know pick up on that and you know did that make you look at Patricia in a different way being I guess from Ireland and you know Mariah even to this day every St Patrick's Day celebrates it puts out her post she does seem to have a fondness I guess for Ireland or her Irish heritage um, but I suppose I was, for, for me, what I learned from the book was not even Patricia, but her mother again, how they, in Illinois, I guess, the, the split, I guess, with the race was very prominent, you know, and even, even within the Irish themselves over there, there was a certain, there was two types of Irish, there was a shantytown Irish and there was a kind of a, a like, um, a middle class Irish, I guess, you know. The indoctrination, I guess, into Patricia, even before Patricia's time, not through any fault of her own, um, how she was raised by her own mother and their beliefs, obviously incorrectly and completely wrong and nobody obviously would advocate that. But that's just, I guess, the way it was in Illinois that time, you know. So I think that probably, and I guess, you know, Patricia did re rebel against that. Yeah, I think it was kind of sad that Mariah didn't really get to experience like that side of her her family and i feel like yeah we've watched her um embrace her irish roots and i feel like actually she's more probably more curious about it than i realized because she what the book made me really appreciate is no she like i kind of knew that patricia getting together with Mariah's dad was not like a go-to thing and she was kind of out there on her own by that choice she made in life but i didn't really connect with pieces like yeah of course yeah Mariah didn't grow up fully having that side of of the family so i guess to this day she's only feels i guess somewhat connected to it and i think the book really made me appreciate that dimitri what was what was your take on the patricia mariah relationship her relationship with her mother really cut deep because like on a personal level um just because of the relationship that i've had with my mother i related in a lot of ways as far as like you know her mother was you know in some ways toxic but it's also somebody that she looks up to it's it's her mother you know you have to you love i mean you just have a love for your mother your parents like that's at least that's the way it's supposed to be um and yeah so that really sat with me just because hearing it from somebody i idolized like mariah carey it just kind of made me feel like in a way like you know it was it's okay to have those feelings towards somebody you're supposed to admire um it's not your fault you're not you know like i guess yeah, you don't have to feel guilty. It's that they're human and they're, they have a certain impact on your life and that that will follow you through adulthood as we see it does to Mariah. So her speaking on that, I really, I love that she voiced that because there are people out there who are going to relate to that. Yeah, and family yeah. is an obligation and yeah. we don't always uh, have the best relationships with family members. A lot of people, you know, um, would, would say that of themselves. So I feel like Mariah being that honest and vulnerable in many ways about the relationship she has with the people that are so close to her in her family. Um, yeah, it makes it, it, she's human, you know? Yeah, it's Mariah Carey, the diva, the singer, but the book isn't about that. Um, and we really get to appreciate those relationships. I just want to read this one bit because this this kicked off light of my life chapter, and this really I was like, wow, she's really going to talk about her mum. 
Um, she said, but ours is a story of betrayal and beauty, of love and abandonment, of sacrifice and survival. I've emancipated my, myself, uh, sorry, I've emancipated myself from bondage several times, but there is a cloud of sadness that I suspect will always hang over me, not simply because of my mother, but because of our complicated journey together. It has caused me so much pain and confusion. Time has shown me there is no benefit in trying to protect people who never tried to protect me. Time and motherhood have finally given me the courage to honestly face my, who my mother has been to me. As soon as we got that at the top of Light of My Life, underneath the lyrics from The Art of Letting Go, that, I mean, before we even get into like, like the particulars and the stories, I was like, wow, she really has got feelings about um, her mother, you know, to this day and stuff went on. And, and I do think it was really brave to share with us the stories which, which which were the like the quotes or the stories um that you guys were you know most uh made, made most of an impression on you when it comes to patricia were there any that like stood really stood out for you it must be like we don't know what happened in her mum's childhood you know something traumatic could have happened there but also it must have you know mariah speaks about um i think i highlighted it actually but black, black people were always an absolute bottom of the order. Nothing was below black. And it's like, that was back then in the 60s. She must have loved Alfred Roy to marry him and to, you know, be estranged from her family. Um, so it must have been hard for her from like not speaking to her mum because she's chose to marry a black man. So maybe that it was all that pent up emotion from that and i don't know if does mariah speak about her dad and mum's relationship was toxic she does say something about um she doesn't even and i'm not quoting it but she says something about like she doesn't even know if her mother really loved her father in that way or if it yeah. was just some sort of like yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say. There's. She kind of says um, when she uh, came onto the scene, her parents. It like the end was there, you know, and her memories growing up of, of her parents being separated, and it was it was weird for her to even think that her parents were married, you know, at any time. Um, and one bit that really uh, stuck with me was when she kind of pondered, you know, well, did my mom really, really? love my dad did patricia really really love alfred uh was it like i because i never saw i can't imagine like this deep romantic love between them and she did almost ponder whether it was just like a rebellion moment or how much of it you know what was the waiting how much of it was you know blind undoubting true love and how much of it was you know two fingers up to her own mother and a bit of rebellion and i'm like wow mariah's really pondering even things like that like they don't really have a deep deep relationship like I feel like she doesn't really know what motivated her mother with these big 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 life decisions back in the day and she says a few times you know she wishes that her mother would just care for her as a person and know her as a person so there's so many things in the book that made me just really appreciate how much of a gap is is between them Taz have you got anything to weigh in on the relationship between Patricia yeah, and Mariah? I was just thinking there like um like in this book, she did kind of allude to the fact that her ex brother and ex sister might have went through more stuff than that she had, um, probably because they probably remember the parents' relationship more. So I think because Mariah doesn't have mem many memories, she refrains from making a contact for, to making a comment on that. But she doesn't dispute that they may have gone through certain scenarios. Probably, you know, obviously she spoke about. Um, you know Morgan and the father and the, the relationship they had which was even at the tail end was pretty tumultuous like as in you know like the fighting and whatever so I think I think she knows a lot of stuff went down but it's not her place to tell us what happened with them she can only talk about her experiences and what happened in her life and um, which is fair enough yeah, and that's a really good point. Um, and that goes back to what I said at the beginning with the whole intention where she says, this is my experience and it isn't going to necessarily match other people's. And there is, you know, a good chunk of years gap between her and her siblings. So they did have different experiences. Um, yeah, when she came onto, onto the 
seeing Mariah, you know, the, the, the marriage was over, you know, she grew up with them as, as, as separate parents. Nath, you said something interesting about um, Alfred, and I kind of shared that view. So let's move on to Alfred. Um, you were starting to talk a bit about how you had one image of Alfred, like before the book, and now it's, it's different. Um, so yeah, what, what changed for you? When I first got that, the Charm Bracelet album, I was like, sometimes for Alfred Roy, like, who the hell is that? Um, and then obviously I listened to the song and was like, oh, it's her dad. And I, <clears throat> I'd heard somewhere um, in one of her interviews that she said that she didn't have a very strong relationship with her dad. And when he died, she'd found like a box and it had loads of clippings in and stuff. And I was like, oh, so he did care. Um, because it was him that was like, you know, why don't you be as famous as, was it Quincy Jones? And it's like, you know, so I get that he is from the military, so he's going to be very, like... I just saw him in a completely different light that I hadn't seen before. Like, I thought he was, like, this really horrible, almost monster. I think the, the book definitely did give me um, a strong opinion not opinion but like an insight into the man that he was because i don't really i don't think i had anything really in mind i thought things were cool between mariah and her mum. apparently not and now i know why i just felt like her dad was absent throughout her childhood but now i understand where he was and what their relationship was about and a large part of it was just mariah was maturing so quickly and she got a jump on her music career so quickly and he was never going to be a part of that because of his military background they just never connected on that um so i appreciate the relationship they have from the book and then with her siblings which we'll get to in a minute like i already had them in like on my bad list but now they're like really like high up on that list it really just has cemented for me everything that i thought about them um I'm <laughs> Siblings, like, yeah, angry, raging, angry, <laughs> and they're not even my siblings. <laughs> we'll get to them in, ju in just a second. Um, Dimitri, what was your take um, on the relationship between Mariah and Alfred? Because I always thought he was just absent, but apparently it, that's, it wasn't as simple as that. So um, I'm on the same page as Nath. I um, I was I thought as well that um, he was kind of like Nate said. Nate said the monster. Um, for some reason, I was just under the same impression that he was like the the bad one or the toxic one in her life. I can't remember why I feel that way. I've just always mm -hmm. thought that. So to hear that he's like the way she paints him, like he's like the one that he's the good one, you know, in the story. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, Patricia's is just flip flopped. But like Sony really tried to paint the idyllic picture and the idyllic life as well by having Patricia back even in the Here Is Mariah special. And, you know, it's hot about how Mariah was singing when she was three. You just thought Mariah had this wonderful life with Patricia. It, you know, there was never any kind of, it, you know, there was no nugget that they had, um, you know, a, a bad past, I guess. We weren't to know. You, you see you see moments with her, so here is Mariah would... Carey, Oprah, and you take it for what it is. There's Mariah and her mum, and her dad's not in the picture. He's not really mentioned. And you just kind of connect the dots, but I think we just connected oh, them in a way it doesn't add up to the full picture. Okay, let's um, talk quickly about the siblings, because going into the book, I knew I didn't like them. <laughs> and now, like Nate said, I'm pretty angry at them. I mean, she finishes Dandelion Tea with this. Um, when I was 12 years old, my sister drugged me with Valium, offered me a pinky f nail full of cocaine, inflicted me with third degree burns and tried to sell me out to a pimp. I mean, she gives us the breakdowns of those stories prior to that, but she ends that chapter with like, here's all the reasons why. And there's more than enough. It filled, filled me with, with so, so much, much anger. anger. I was shaking when I read it. Like, I was like, so... Not only have you offered a child drugs and offered her to be to set, sell her out as a pimp to a pimp, but she's your your younger sister. That's disgusting. Like that is the lowest of the low. What gets me is knowing what like you've done. You don't then just hide away over the years. She's tried to go public and you know make like a thing about like if if I had done stuff like that. And that person is now like the superstar and has got all that power and influence. You just want to go and just live your quiet life quietly away from the media. But she doesn't. She tries to kick up 
kick up some dirt and stuff. Taz, what did you take away from the book with regards to the siblings? Like, I wish Mariah did have that relationship with her sister because I think she'd have loved that ride or die person. I think Mariah styled that through her whole life and obviously because of her own immediate family has trust issues. I know her brother has mentioned in the past, um, like Mariah does, like, do you know, we all know it now because of the People magazine, I guess, the um, the bipolar. Um, but I've seen interviews myself from the brother in the past saying that Patricia had that as well. So look, we can sit here, we can probably judge and say, but we like there is probably a lot in the mix for the way things panned out in her life. It just could be a, like from watching Precious and watching the mother in Precious and the, obviously the, Mariah, the movie Mariah played in, it highlighted to me that maybe some people aren't evil and maybe they don't set out. It just could be like what what Precious herself went through was a product of an ill mother. You know what I mean? So it it just might not be, it, there could be just more to all the stories like that we don't even really know about. That's my kind of little takeaway from yeah. it. That's a good point. There's always, there's always two sides to every story and you can only do as best as you know. And if you set out as an ill-equipped parent, how how well are you going to do at the end of the day? Um, but I do think that her siblings were damaged, but I do think they're very bitter. And that largely has to do with the success Mariah went on to have. And she said several times in her career that she would look at what was going on with her family and put things on the list of what not to do when I get older and how I don't want to live my life. Um, so she was taking my negative lessons, not positive lessons. So, um, yeah. Uh, Dimitri, what are your thoughts on the ex-brother and the ex-sister? Um, <laughs> um, well, Alison, Oh, she's, she's the devil, darling. She's the devil. <laughs> um, I just, it blows me away. Like the whole kitchen part, the kitchen story where um, they're in the kitchen, right? Or the dining room. Is that what it was? Yeah. And when Allison inflicted her with third degree burns, I just can't, like I've pictured myself while I was reading that part, it was so detailed that I pictured myself in that kitchen, like I, or in the dining room, like I was there, I saw Mariah on the phone, like, and I saw all this and I just wanted to like, just <laughs> take flight on Allison. It just was, I could not believe that she did that. And and then Mariah described all of like the pain that came after that. Yeah, I think there's a lot of different moving parts there. Like like Taz said, there's different sides of stories. So we never really know, you know, when Mariah says, oh, they, they already had their own damage. Well, we're not hearing their, it's not their book. So yeah, they had damage, but we don't get to hear it from their perspective. Um, but also, I think the, the age gap between Mariah and her siblings, like her brother wasn't really going to be interested at his age hanging out with a little girl, you know? So I think there's there's that element as well. Um, and Mariah said when, when um, Alison went away and then came back, it was just a, like a different person. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and just having the whole split family thing as well. Like, you know, it wasn't like they were all ever under one roof, you know, for years and years and years. They didn't really have that experience. So I think there were like many things in the way. Um, a lot of it was very questionable choices that people, especially like Alison, made. Like, why was she th like thinking this was okay to do with her her kid sister and stuff? Um, but certainly, I think there were a lot of circumstances around them as a family, and that's why I think all the little stories really add to this because. Um, she, in a book, Mariah can just give so much more detail and all the circumstances now kind of make a lot more things make sense, including so many of the songs. And that's one of the reasons why I love this book so, so much and all the lyrics throughout because I get to reconnect. I don't know how, how you guys feel about it, but I get, feel like I get to reconnect with the music and appreciate it mm -hmm. on a different level now. Specifically close my eyes. Yeah, for sure. You know, like we just, Mariah's been lambasted by other, um, you know, um, fans, uh, other, I guess, um, fan bases, you know, because she doesn't dance and all the rest. But like reading the book, you know, it's just, we probably always said over the years, why doesn't she drop kick into a routine? But obviously reading the book, it's not like she wasn't interested or she, she obviously harbored a lot of things as a little girl. So little Mariah is still there. And that that's a great point, that one specifically, but they're everything is for a reason the eternally 12 is for a reason the um not knowing time is for a reason like it that all plays it's all for a reason it's not just the diva mariah show that we love but it's and i've always said that she because a, a couple of my friends say oh she's such a diva and i'm like 
that's just a persona. Like nobody is the same. I don't. I don't know if this is true, but to me, nobody is the same around every single person in their life. Like I, for one, can say that I'm not the same when I'm around my mum and dad than I am when I'm around my friends. So, you guys, that's I think all the time we have for today. Um, so thank you so much for joining me. And what we need to do is reschedule and get another date in the diary so we can move on to Sing Sing. Because as much as I really enjoyed Wayward Child and having all the childhood stories, I got a new wave of excitement when I got to Sing Sing because enter Tommy and the early years of the career. And there are so many things we need to discuss. So we will be back, <laughs> more of this, Dimitri. <laughs> we'll be back very soon to discuss the second part, Sing Sing. Thank you, guys, and I'll see you again soon. All right, bye. Bye, bye guys. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining. Please let us know in the comments your thoughts about this section of the memoir and join us right here on my channel for the next section very, very soon. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future uploads. I'll see you again soon. Cheers, thanks a lot.